so far we have seen cauchy's integral formula which is helpful in uh, not only evaluating contour integrals but uh, uh, most importantly it gives us the functional values on points which are inside a contour c by just calculating the contour integral along that contour c now in this module we are going to see that not only the functional values but also its derivatives can be calculated in this way okay now we are going to see cauchy's integral formula for the derivatives of a complex valued function now let's recall what is cauchy's integral formula we have an analytic function in a simply connected domain d and we have a simple closed positively oriented contour c then the functional value at any point z0 inside the contour c f of z0 can be evaluated in the way 1 over 2 pi iota contour integral of f of z over z minus z0 along contour c now as i said earlier that uh, now we are going to see that not only the functional values but also its derivatives can be calculated in this way of course uh, the formula is not going to be the same but it it is a kind of generalization of cauchy's integral formula now let's see what is the cauchy's integral formula for derivatives so under the same conditions we have analytic function in a simply connected domain d the contour is simple closed and positively oriented then uh, for any uh, integer n greater than or equal to 0 and of course any point z inside this contour c this uh, derivative of this function at this point z can be evaluated in the following way uh, now you can see some differences so over here it was 1 now it is n factorial and uh, it is equal to f of xi over xi minus z it is to power n plus 1 d xi now over here uh, we take uh, the dummy variable inside the contour integral to be xi just to uh, uh, make it different uh, from this uh, uh, number z that lies inside this contour c now over here you can see that if we take n is equal to 0 uh, then uh, it is just going to give us the cauchy's integral formula now let's see how it gives us cauchy's integral formula because if n is equal to 0 then this becomes f raised to power it's it's basically not power but f0 of z so f0 of z is the function itself so it becomes f of z and this uh, zero factorial becomes 1 and over here this n is 0 so it becomes xi minus z okay so the only difference is uh, over there we were using z0 and z0 or and here we are using z and z and the dummy variable is xi so it is a kind of generalization of cauchy's integral formula and uh, we, using this result we can now calculate not only the functional value but also the derivatives of the function now let's see how this cauchy's integral formula for derivative help us in evaluating uh, some contour integrals so over there uh, in cauchy's integral formula case the condition was the denominator is a linear factor but over here this condition is removed and now we can have powers of the linear factor so in this case you can see that the denominator has the form z minus 1 raised to power 3 so of course we cannot apply cauchy's integral formula here but we can apply cauchy's integral formula for derivatives and uh, in this case the contour is simple uh, closed and positively oriented basically it's a circle of radius 2 which is uh, anti taken anti clockwise now uh, integrand is not analytic inside this contour c since the denominator vanishes at z is equal to 1 which is a point inside this contour c so this is just a reminder that uh, this uh, contour integral is not going to be zero according to cauchy gorsa theorem so we cannot apply cauchy gorsa theorem here so uh, we are left with uh, other results and uh, by comparison uh, we we have a kind of guess that uh, cauchy's integral formula for derivatives can help us in evaluating this integral of course if we want to apply cauchy's integral formula for derivatives then uh, certain conditions should be satisfied so number one the you know, uh, the numerator should be analytic in a simply connected domain d so we take the simply connected domain d to be the entire complex plane and uh, this uh, numerator is a polynomial and which is, which are entire functions and hence uh, the first condition is satisfied also uh, this uh, contour is a simple closed and positively oriented okay so if all the conditions are satisfied now let's see how do we proceed further with this uh, application of cauchy's integral formula for derivatives okay so if we want to apply this uh, we need to compare and we need to find for example what is the value of n in this case what is the function f of xi in this case so by comparison we can easily see that the value of n is equal to 2 because uh, it is n plus 1 
and uh, over here we have 3 so the value of n becomes n is equal to 2 and uh, the function becomes this numerator z cube plus 3 z square plus 2 z plus 1 and according to Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives this is equal to 2 pi out over 2 factorial and uh, uh, the value of the double derivative of f at point 1 because this is z minus 1 raised to power 3 okay now let's uh, evaluate so only uh, thing to be evaluated is this double derivative at point 1 okay so moving on uh, the function is z cube plus 3z square plus 2z plus 1 and uh, the first derivative is uh, 3z square plus 6z plus 2 and the second derivative becomes uh, 6z plus 6 of course we need to find we need to evaluate this second derivative at point z is equal to 1 and the value becomes 12 now using this value in this form we can easily calculate this contour integral and the contour integral becomes uh, the following okay so this 2 will be cancelled out with this 2 because 2 factorial is 2 into 1 which is 2 so we get 12 pi iota so in a very uh, simple way we can calculate this contour integral by this uh, by using this Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives now uh, in uh, in our previous discussions we evaluated this uh, uh, contour integral and uh, it was a relatively computationally demanding uh, result uh, so the result says that uh, this contour integral of the integral 1 over z minus z naught raised to power n is equal to 2 pi iota if n is equal to 1 and it is 0 if n is not equal to 1 now let's uh, see how this uh, formula Cauchy's formula for derivatives can help us in simplifying or proof okay so now we are going to consider the same example but using Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives now there are three cases the first case is when n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 then this becomes uh, uh, a case for Cauchy's integral formula and uh, the Cauchy's integral formula uh, gives us the value to be 2 pi out into f of z naught and the numerator or f of z in this case is 1 so th that is why f of z naught is just 1 and hence the value is 2 pi iota so the first case is satisfied the second case uh, is basically the value when n is greater than or equal to 0 and n is not equal to 1 so basically we are talking about the cases when n is an integer and it is greater than or equal to 2 so basically 2 3 4 5 up to so on so in this case we can apply the Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives because the value of n is greater than 1 and in this case what do we get 2 pi iota divided by n minus 1 factorial and the n minus 1th derivative of this function at this point z naught now what is this function f of z naught f of z in this case so f of z in this case is this one constant function one and we know that the derivative of a constant function is zero and hence this value is going to be equal to zero and uh, we get 2 pi out over n minus 1 factorial multiplied by 0 and which is basically 0 so that is the second case of course the third case is going to be when this m is an integer and it is a negative integer and what will happen in this case so if n is a negative integer so z minus z naught raised to power minus n so this is going to be positive uh, number so this power is going to be positive integer and uh, so uh, when we evaluate or when we open this power then it becomes a polynomial and a polynomial is an entire function and according to cauchy gorsa theorem okay so according to cauchy gorsa theorem this contour integral is going to be equal to zero and that's how simple it is to uh, apply cauchy's integral formula for derivatives and uh, finding answers which were uh, relatively complicated in our previous discussions so moving on to the next example where we have this uh, kind of complicated uh, integrand it is basically a cubic polynomial over a, a quartic polynomial and uh, the contour c is given in the following diagram okay so that's our contour c so there are uh, of course many troubles in this case so the first trouble is the integrand is a kind of complicated uh, at least uh, if we want to apply uh, the definition of contour integration then it is uh, basically an extremely complicated task and the second trouble is the second trouble is that uh, the c is not a simple curve because uh, there is a self intersection at this point 
we have seen a case like this where uh, the curve is not a simple curve so what do we do in this case so we write down c as a union of two uh, simple uh, curves so in this case uh, uh, c can be written as uh, this portion which is uh, c1 and this portion which is c2 and uh, of course the problem of uh, simplifying this integrand uh, remains uh, uh, the same but we will see how we can simplify uh, this expression okay so moving on so first we uh, get rid of this problem that c is not a, a simple uh, curve and there is a self intersection of c with itself and uh, we can write down this c as union of c2 and c1 so this uh, green portion uh, of this c is c2 and this uh, red portion of c is basically c1 and c is equal to c1 plus c2 now there is a, a little problem over here so c2 is okay c2 is simple closed and positively oriented since it is counter clockwise and but the c1 is uh, simple closed but not positively oriented so what do we do in this case so in this case of course minus c1 is going to be positively oriented so somehow uh, we will use minus c1 instead of uh, c1 so we will see how we uh, use this in our computations and of course c2 is positively oriented so c is equal to c1 plus c2 c1 is negatively oriented and hence minus c1 positively oriented and c2 is positively oriented now moving on uh, let's uh, have a look at our integrand now okay so so this contour integral becomes the contour integral along c1 and contour integral along c2 but uh, this uh, contour integral has a problem that this c1 is not positively oriented so what do we do so we write down minus and then multiply minus with this c1 okay so according to our results that we have seen in our uh, basics of contour integration that uh, when we have a minus sign that this will be uh, become minus c1 so this problem is resolved using a very simple result of contour integrals and now we have two contour integrals so both along simple closed positively uh, oriented contours minus c1 and min and c2 okay now uh, the problem of simplifying uh, the integrand can be handled using the method of uh, partial fractions so we can write down uh, this integrand in the following way okay so of course i'm uh, it is not a, a very simple task to write down the uh, partial fractions of this rational function so uh, but uh, the, we have seen these uh, uh, questions like this in our uh, college uh, algebra book so i'm leaving this as an exercise for you that uh, this uh, rational function is equal to this expression okay so let's consider our first contour integral which is a contour integral along minus c1 and uh, since uh, uh, this integrand uh, has uh, can be written as a sum of three uh, simple expressions so basically we are left with evaluating these three contour integrals now uh, the first integral can be calculated by cauchy's integral formula for derivatives so in this case uh, the function f of z is 1 and the value of n is basically 1 and uh, using cauchy's integral formula for derivatives the value becomes 2 pi iota over 1 factorial f prime of 3 now since this function f of z is a constant function which is 1 so the derivative is going to be equal to 0 and hence the value of this integral is going to be equal to 0 now moving on to the next contour integral we can use cauchy's integral formula in this case because uh, the power of this linear factor in the denominator is 1 and hence by Cauchy's integral formula the value become 2 pi iota f of z naught and since in this case the numerator function is once again constant function 1 so f of z naught basically z naught is equal to 2 in this case so it becomes 1 and hence the value of this contour integral is 2 pi iota now moving on to our last uh, contour so uh, once again applying Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives uh, since in this case n is equal to 1 and f of z is equal to 1 and in this case it becomes 2 pi out over 1 factorial uh, multiplied by f prime of 2 and f prime once again is 0 and hence the value of this uh, contour integral is also 0 using Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives now adding all these results so the value of first contour integral is 0 the value of second contour integral is 
2 pi iota the value of third contour integral is 0 adding them the value of this contour integral is 2 pi iota now on the same lines we can uh, calculate uh, this contour integral now uh, the point is in this case this 3 does not uh, lie inside this contour c2 okay so 3 is inside this contour c1 but not inside this contour c2 so we can say that this integrand is basically an analytic function inside and on the contour c2 and similarly this function this integrand 1 over z minus 2 is analytic on and inside this contour c2 and similarly for this third integrand and hence by cauchy gorsa theorem uh, the value of this contour integral is going to be equal to 0 okay so moving on to uh, our main contour integral so this contour integral is going to be equal to minus of this contour integral plus this contour integral and the value of this contour integral is 2 pi iota and hence in, in this case it becomes minus 2 pi iota plus 0 and hence our required answer is minus 2 pi iota so that's how we apply cauchy's cauchy gorsa theorem cauchy's integral formula and cauchy's integral formula for derivatives all of uh, these theorems are used in this uh, in the evaluation of this contour integral and uh, we can uh, evaluate this contour integral which is otherwise a very complicated task now apart from simplification of contour integrals there are some very important uh, consequences of cauchy's integral formula for derivatives now we are going to have a look at two such consequences now our first uh, important consequence is that if a function is analytic in a domain d then for integers n greater than or equal to 0 the derivatives the nth derivative of this function is also going to be an analytic function so in other words if a function is an analytic in a domain d then its derivatives are also going to be analytic now this is a very important consequence of this cauchy's integral formula for derivatives okay so of course this result will be used for example when we are trying to evaluate uh, the taylor series or uh, other uh, computations related to analytic functions the second and another important consequence of this uh, formula is uh, about harmonic functions now if we have a harmonic function u at uh, uh, each and every point x y in the domain d then all the partial derivatives uh, ux uy uxx uxy uyy they exist and they are also harmonic functions now these are some of the important uh, consequences of cauchy's integral formula uh, which uh, which have very uh, far reaching and very important consequences in the theory of complex valued functions now in this module we have seen what it is cauchy's integral formula for derivatives and uh, we have seen that how we can use it for the evaluation of contour integrals and most importantly some of its uh, consequences